Hello, George Hepworth, Grover Park Consulting. Building the Lander Trail Foundation Searchable Online Database Application. In the introduction, I gave you an overview to the application itself and the organization for which I created it, and a little bit about the environmental restrictions we had to work under to make it work. In this video, I'm going to take a little deeper dive into one of the functions. In particular, we'll look at the manage publications where we have the ability to uh, edit information about each book currently in our, in our database. I want to start by pointing out that the number of books we currently have cataloged is just under 2,000. For those of you who are coming from the access world, 2,000 doesn't sound like a lot of records. And in fact, it's not compared to the tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of records you might end up with in an access to SQL Server database application. However, in the Power Apps world, in the online world, where we're looking at the ability to manage the data retrieval, 2,000 is actually a pretty significant limit. If we look at the settings, you will see that there is something called a delegation limit. The data role limit refers to how many rows can be retrieved from server-based connections, and that's SQL Server, SQL Azure, and so on, where delegation is not supported. What this means is that Power Apps has the ability to bring in no more than 2,000 records at a time in any one request for records for a lot of the functions that you might normally expect to use. We always have to keep in mind this 2,000 record limit for delegation or delegable functions. And you'll see this coming up frequently in the application. In this case, the current number of records is just under that delegation limit. So in this environment, we probably aren't going to incur any penalties. However, it's always something to keep in the back of your mind when you're working with an application like this, that you need to be mindful of the ability to pull no more than 2,000 records at a time. You can load more than 2,000. You can load many more thousand. I've uploaded up to, I believe, 9,900 and something. In, in one test. You can load many more than that, but the requirement, the delegation requirement is 2,000 or less for any single request. Otherwise, it's going to come in chunks. So that's something to keep in mind. We're under that, but we're okay. Coupled with that is a technique that you probably are all familiar with from working with Access. And that is that when we open any form, in this case, we're talking about screens in the web browser, but whenever you open that initial view of the data, you want to return the minimum number of records possible. In this case, zero. I have a filter set that says when you open this screen, which is the publication screen where we're going to search, and we can search by either the book title categories or authors show me zero records. That gives me the fastest possible load time on that screen. Notice that if, let's start with authors. If we select an author, and I'll just go scroll down here to uh, pick one that I recognize John Anderson. Now my performance is a little slower here because we're competing with the recording software for resources. So it's going to go a little bit slower than it does without that. Notice it brought back one record and my label here updated itself to indicate that I brought back one and only one record. That means that in this 1929 books only one was written by an author named John Anderson. Again, the principle is minimum number of records required to meet our request. 
Okay, that did it. And there's my title. Again, the delay is unusual because of the competition for resources between the recording software and the actual Power Apps application. It started to bring back books. Uh, this little chevron here indicates that there will be multiple records, other records below this one. Uh, the specific control used here is called a gallery, and it's roughly the equivalent in some ways to a uh, continuous view subform. If, if you were an access developer, that will mean something to you. But, it me but each record is displayed on a single screen. Pause here to talk a little bit about the format. Because of the fact that this needs to run on an iPhone or a tablet, tablet works fine, on an iPhone, this has to be large enough in this format when it shrinks down to fit the size of the iPhone or the tablet, you can still read and work the application. The buttons are clickable and so on. So even though this looks oversized in the browser, when you sh shrink it down to use it on the tablet, this is about as m small as you can manage. So we put it on one book per screen. And all of these books, then uh, seven in total, indicate Will Bagley is the author. Okay, so we're going to refresh. This will remove all of the filters. Reset us back to zero. Well, let's do category next. Let's see. That's an interesting one. I don't know what's going to be in there. And again, our delay. And again, we get seven responses for the category American Authors. Uh, these probably can be augmented, uh, and that's actually something that the foundation is going to have to do. I'll talk about that more in detail in a later video. This came back from the Google Books as American authors. And so each of these can be further categorized by where they fit in our, our library. But their uh, primary category assigned by Google was American authors, Henry David Thoreau, and so on. So that's pretty much it as far as the actual searching for authors and categories. Let's do one more search. And I will do Oregon Trail. Notice that it matched Oregon to Oregon. And then I added some more characters to refine it further. That's because this is a contains search box. Yeah. So it will immediately attempt to match. And as you continue to type, it will match further. We now have a total of 43 titles out of 1929, which have the words Oregon Trail in the title. And that makes sense because that's what this is all about, the Lander Trail, the Oregon Trail. That's the filtering. Let's pause. I'm going to switch gears and show you a little bit about how the filtering works. We'll leave runtime, go into design view. We're on the publication screen and we're looking at the publications gallery. It's a gallery, as I mentioned, and that's the name of the gallery. Galleries have items, which is in the access world equivalent to a record source. A form or a subform can be bound to a query or a table, and that's its record source. In the Power Apps world, we refer to as the refer to the data source as items, which is again a set of records drawn from an underlying data source. In this case, it's the publications table directly, and it's filtered. And you can see some different filtering applied. I want to pause and remind you 
that at this point, I'm pulling the records directly un from the underlying publication table, which has n just under 2,000 records. We should be fine in terms of our number of records, but keeping in mind that there's always this potential for running afoul of the delegation limit, which is 2,000. And Power Apps throws up this blue underline to warn us this formula might not work correctly on large data sets. So if this application grows beyond the 2,000 or so that we have already, we will need to come back and adopt a slightly different approach to avoid running afoul of this delegation limit. But that's a future consideration. The way this works is we're going to pull records from the publications table. We have three filters set. We have the category filter, the author filter, and the search, which is searching against this contains search control. So whatever we type into this control on the form is used as a third filter. We can combine two or more filters together with this structure so that we can filter by author, by publication, by title, or by title, by author, or by title, by category, and so on. The outer part of this items list is a sort, and we just sort in ascending order on the title of the publication. So that's the parts. Let's look at the details. First we say, if the category filter is not equal to zero, and that will happen if we select a category here. Oops, excuse me, category here. If it's non-zero, then we're going to filter a second table called Publication Genre, and this is a list of all publications and the categories or genres to which they belong. And if we find one or more records that match this publication ID in this table, that means that one or more publications has been assigned to a particular category or genre, and that is the genre picked by this drop down here. So that's the first if. The second if does the same thing, except it looks at authors, and it looks at the publication creator table. These are both junction tables. Those of you coming from the access world will recognize these as junction tables. We have a foreign key from the publication and a foreign key from the genre or category. We have a foreign key from the publication and a foreign key from the creator or author. If we find one or more publications with that author ID or creator ID, then we know that we can bring those back. These then are applied consecutively First we filter on category, then we apply a filter to that based on the author selected. Finally, we look at our input in the search control. And if both of those filters here are zero, if no category has been selected, and no author has been selected, we're going to coalesce on the text in that searching control and X, Y, Z. What that does is ensure that if we have zero categories, zero authors, and nothing in this field, we're going to get X, Y, Z and that will match no titles. 
which brings us back to zero records returned if all of those controls are at their initial state. Coalesce says return the first non-null value. That means if there is a value in that control, we return it. If there's not a value, we return X, Y, Z. And that's how we filter X, Y, Z equals no title. We get zero titles. If there are no filters applied here, then we're just going to filter against whatever is in that field. If it's nothing, then we get nothing, so we don't get a match. So this is how we combine three filters against the underlying tables to return zero or more than one matching record from each of those three categories. There are previously recorded videos which go into this kind of uh, technique in more detail and I will provide a link in the description to those so that you can go ahead and look them up. I wanted to show you here in a, in a very high level look uh, the kind of thing we need to do. Comment about that. Uh, filtering here is a lot like filtering in the access world. We can string together different filters and, and tailor our record set from a large to a smaller to a smaller set of records that match one, two, three of our criteria. But the goal in all of that is to return the minimum number of records that match all three, two, or one of our criteria. So at that point, I think we've covered way more than I intended to uh, in terms of time. We haven't covered a lot of material, but I think in order to meet my goal of keeping these videos shorter. I'm going to call it a day here. Ask you to please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button if you like what you've seen. I'll be back in a few days with another installment on the Lander Trail Foundation searchable online database. Thank you.